Hey everyone, Nick here. Today we're gonna to be setting up your GoPro to be able to shoot with the best possible settings. So if you're anything like me, when you see GoPro release a new camera and you see their beautiful commercials, you go out and pick up the camera and then you try to recreate the shots and your footage looks so far different from what GoPro advertises. And that is something that I always struggled with and I recently found out a way to overcome that as I was going through the camera and I figured I would share this with you guys. This is not something new. I'm not the one that, the one that found this out. Um, I actually Googled it just to make sure. Today I'll be using the GoPro Hero 5. However, this tutorial will work from the Hero 4 all the way up to the Hero 7, which as far as I know is the latest one up to this point. Now the main reason why your GoPro footage probably doesn't look that good is because you have your camera set to change the settings for you automatically. We don't want that. When you're shooting on any GoPro or action camera, you always wanna make sure that your camera is set to manual mode. Now in order to do this, we have to turn something on called ProTune, and that's inside of the GoPro, and that's gonna allow us to individually tweak the settings that we need to create the flattest profile possible. Now the reason why we want a flat profile is because that once you go into the editing room, you're gonna have a lot more control to adjust your saturation, to adjust your exposure, your shadows, your highlights, your whites, your blacks. All of that is not possible when you have the camera set to automatic mode because what GoPro typically does is when it's set to automatic mode, it's gonna try to find the best possible settings and automatically apply those. So when you are on automatic and then you start editing, it's already kind of been done for you and you have a lot less room to work with. It's kind of like taking a bagel and trying to turn it into a donut, where if you have the dough, you can take that dough and make a bagel or a donut. Does that make sense? <laughs> you may be wondering why I'm outside and not behind a computer trying to teach you this, and that's because a GoPro belongs out in the field and that's where I'm currently at. So let's go for a quick ride. I'm gonna show you some footage and then we're gonna take this into the editing room and I'm gonna show you guys a really cool preset that is free by the way and you guys can use that for your GoPro and I'm gonna show you guys the best possible looks with that preset. So we are in Premiere Pro now. I currently have my Lumetri Color window pulled up and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So window, select Lumetri Color. Um, I already have my LUT installed and all of these clips have already been color graded. And I'm gonna just show you what you should look for um, when you're color grading. So this is straight out of the GoPro. This is with the ProTune settings that I mentioned earlier. So with those settings, we can go ahead and create something like this. And obviously this is something so much more professional. This looks, has such high contrast. It's vibrant, but it doesn't look unnatural. And it still has that, that little bit of touch of cinematic look to it. So let's go ahead and go into the main settings here, which is we're under the basic correction tab. And I typically bring the contrast up just a little bit because that helps create a little bit more depth in your image. And then I bring the highlights down mainly because GoPro typically has the highlights very high and it's constantly trying to uh, adjust itself. So I usually bring those down a little bit and then we're gonna bring our shadows down. And the reason why is because the shadows typically help give that extra bit of depth. For typical footage, I actually bring my blacks down. However, because it's GoPro, the color profile is a little bit different. So I usually bring those up a little bit. Once we're actually done with the basic correction panel, which is pretty straightforward, we go into the creative and as you can see, my LUT is already installed. Now in order to bring that up, you just literally hit the look button, browse, and then select your preset. When you install the LUT, it usually goes to 100%. And you can see how strong that is. It actually doesn't look too bad, but at the same time, it doesn't look natural. So I highly recommend just finding the right portion to where you think it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this percentage around 25% for a more natural look. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the curves panel here. In my curves, I bring down the shadows quite a bit. And the reason why is because it helps give that extra punch. You can see that. And you don't wanna crush them too much because that just looks unnatural. And then this is the cool part. So the hue saturation curves is one of the best things that I could recommend learning how to use in Premiere Pro. 
And I think that Final Cut Pro has something very similar. Basically what this allows you to do is individually take the colors that you want. As you can see, there's all the colors on the color wheel and you can individually select a certain section that you can bring up to increase or decrease a certain color. You say you have a shot and it's just naturally very green. However, you want a more desaturated look, you can take those greens and those yellows and you can bring them down and create this kind of like desert look. You can really go any direction with color grading. That's why I love color grading personally because it's just so much fun to see the different kinds of looks you can create. Let's go ahead and go into this clip. This clip is a little bit more difficult and I'll show you why. You can see that it's extremely bright. However, that right around here, it's even more bright and you can't even really see the detail in the road. It's just blown out. I kind of kept my shadows a little bit darker here. That allowed me to bring a little bit more detail out in the road. I try to keep this preset at 25% over all of my clips because when you go, when you increase the intensity of your LUT, it's going to create the different colors. So naturally it takes your greens and your yellows and makes them slightly more orange to match that orange and teal look. You want to make sure that that color is consistent through all of your clips. The curves, for the RGB and the hue saturation are the same around all the same close because those colors I want to be consistent. The only thing that I'm changing is my shadows, my exposure, my highlights, all of that stuff to kind of compensate for whether a shot is too bright or too dark. So we're on the next clip here. This is the before and this is the after. You can see a lot more punch. And for this, you can see I brought my highlights down brought the contrast up, my blacks up again, the rest is pretty much the same. This is actually one of my favorite shots because on the edge of the road, you can see that all this brush is just kind of flying by and it looks super, super cool. And for this, I'll show you the before and the after. So let's actually go towards the beginning of the clip because it was a little bit darker. So you can see it's a lot lower light than something like this. So here you got bright lights and here it gets a little bit darker. So here what I did is I brought up my exposure just a little bit and the exposure tab is extremely sensitive. This is what it was typically shot at and I brought it up to 0.6. Make sure that when you're recording your footage that you look at it in before you go into the post and make sure that your footage looks good because in certain situations your camera is gonna either be too dark or too bright and you wanna make sure that you get the best possible shot before you get to the editing room so that you have less work to do once you are sitting down and color grading your footage. I'll show you quickly how to copy and paste these LUTs. It's very simple. You just hit Command C on your keyboard and you can either right click and hit Paste Attributes, which is right here. And you can select which ones you want. For this, we just want the color and it's already applied and you just hit OK and it'll automatically add that to your footage. Now make sure that when you copy and paste your clips, you still have to go in and individually adjust your basic corrections, which are your exposure, your highlights, your saturation, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I ask that you leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the little bell so that you're notified for the next time that I release a video. I read all of your guys' comments, so please let me know what you'd like to see for a future episode. And as always, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.